hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, fly fish fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today I'll be tying a little uh, little jig pattern. Um, it's I call it uh, my UV caddis, but uh, it, it, whether it's a caddis or not, uh, that's what they seem to be taking them as, because um, that's the time of year that I use them in the rivers and so on. Um, I've done really well with these uh, over the years. Um, I changed it up just a little bit, but uh, um, like over the years, I've changed it up. Um, but this one is a uh, a pretty pretty uh, um, pretty uh, um, good pattern to have in your box. I've had this one in my box for many years. Like I said, I've changed changed it up a little bit because materials have have advanced and so on. But uh, other than that, um, it's 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 basically the same one that I've been using for years. So. Here we go. So today we'll start off with a Hanek H450BL size 12 jig hook. I should have probably taken it out before I started the video, but I didn't. So let's start off with that. And then I'm going to just use a gold or silver, whatever you prefer. I prefer the gold. Um, sometimes I actually like using a... Uh, a bright colored one as well. I just don't have I don't have any bright colored uh, jig heads Jig head beads with me at the moment. I'm actually gonna pick a bunch up this weekend up in Edmonton, so So I am just gonna Try to get this Yeah, and of course the one I picked doesn't want to go on Don't hurry when you're playing with beads because I don't know how many times I've left the bead case open and next thing you know they're tinkling all over the floor. <laughs> Not fun. Especially when you got a small curious dog. So just going to get that face in the right way and then I'm just going to get some uh, green, olive green nano silk. started right behind the bead there don't worry about if the bead moves at this moment because so what I'm gonna do is make sure that the bead is on the right way and then I'm just gonna just gonna go right like you see how I'm kind of rubbing up against the bead like that just gonna create a bit of a, a thread down there just a little bit just so it doesn't move much okay so now what I'm going to use for the tail is, again, this has changed over the years. Um, I use, um, sometimes I'll just use a, um, off of a hackle. I'll just use a, some of the, you know, some of the fibers off of a hackle. Um, it all depends. But this time, I'm, what this is, is just, again, to show you guys that you can find stuff everywhere. Um, I did a video a while, actually, this one here, this fly here, really, it's a big leech pattern, but it's, it's, it's made out of a, a, like a faux fur um, and it's actually an old pillowcase and uh, yeah so basically that's that's the fiber so I'm just going to take a few of those and just line up the tips as best as I can I don't want too too many of these so I'm just gonna pull out I'm just pulling out anything that's sticking out I, I only want like maybe six or eight of them at the most so about Maybe the not even the, quite the length of the body sticking past, so I'm just going to lay it down right there. Just st start my thread, get it started. A little too long, so I'm just going to pull that back just a little bit. There, that's better. Take my scissors, just cut off that excess at the front there. And I come back to the bend roughly to the bend of the hook and stop and then go under and over and then I'm going to come back and that's it just a, it's just a hint of a tail okay then I'm going to take some of the Zemperfly UV Cheeky and add that on back again right to the end 
right where you stopped with that tail. And just leave that there. Then I'm going to take some of, and I love this stuff, this hairline hair zero, uh, hair zero plus dub gold. Um, it's got a little bit of the, as you can, you can see there, it's got a little bit of the shiny little bits in it and stuff. I just love this stuff. I use it a lot, actually. Especially my river flies, I use it a lot. So, wax, wax my thread a bit. This is just so it. Just get that started. And then as you come forward, just make sure that it's, if anything, I want a little bit more up front here. I want a bit of a taper. So I'm just going to add a little bit more just to make sure I get that taper that I want, that I require. Just dub that on. Just come back a bit if I have to. Yeah, and a little tiny bit more, just a tiny bit. I want to leave a bit of a space here because I'm going to be putting on a, uh, a nice spiky um, collar made out of hair's ear. Actually not hair's ear, hair's body. So I'm leaving just a little bit of room there just to get in there. Now I'm going to take my UV Cheeky and I want three wraps. That's all I want. One, two, three wraps. Come up and over. It's almost four, but I'll get that tied off. So now what I'm going to do is I've got, you know what, I'm going to switch over to the other camera just so you guys can see. Got this big uh, piece of rabbit. Okay, so I'm just going to take, now I can tell this one was a winter. It was it was coming either coming out of or going into winter, but you can, actually I'll switch back over. You guys can see, you can tell, you can see all that under fluff in this one, right? It's got a ton of under fluff, underbody hair. Great for using for dubbing and stuff, but I don't want that. I actually want the guard hairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a section of this that's got, I don't want, for this one, I want one that's got more of the brownies and blacks. I don't want the light grays, like, I don't want this color here. I want the more that, like that. So, what I'm going to do is just going to pick out of the, of the body. I'm just going to pick it out like that, see? I'm going to do about three little batches like that. And I'm laying them down on my table here. And I'm going to put them into a material clip. So, three little... Little batches, get rid of all this under fluff. You don't need it, you don't want it actually. Actually, and that's enough. I got enough out of two, I don't need to go three. So I'll show you guys, once I got it in my material clip, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Get that in my clip. Cut these short, so. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my thread. I like doing a split thread technique with this for sure. Just find you got better control personally uh, just a little bit of wax just to make sure it holds on to that here and it goes get it to grab a hold you're not needing a ton of this stuff right so sometimes I'll, I'll show you guys a couple of other flies I've tied um, like this sometimes you want it more spiky, like more more of a collar. Sometimes you don't. This one's going to be probably middle of the road. It's not going to be a thin collar, but it's not going to be a heavy one either. So now, every time I wrap, I'm just making sure I'm stroking these guard hairs back. Okay, once I'm done, take a little bit of uh, your Sally Hansen's or whatever head cement you prefer. And just give it a bit of a, just right onto the thread. And then get it right in, just get that hair out of the way. And get it right in behind that bead. So that's got one set of whip finish without and one set of whip finish with. I'm just going to close my head cement because I've spilled that before too. And that's not fun. Nip that off. Take my brush, just give it a bit of a bit of a brush. You can even take your Velcro and just go in and just 
rough that body a little bit if you want. Just get some of those, that, some of that hair out if you want to. Could have done that earlier before I did the uh, wrapping as well, but I don't do it very often. It gets beat up, so um, uh, it'll come out anyway, right? And that that's the finished fly. Like, it's super simple. Just want to show you guys that UV cheeky. I'm going to turn off my main light here, and I'm going to hit this with my UV light. Look at this. It just glows in the dark, this stuff. It's just unbelievable. I really like this UV cheeky. Um, if you don't like how thick it is, you can try to cut it down. I've done that before. Uh, it's a little bit challenging because it's 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 already fairly, right? It's really fairly thin already, right? So, um, but uh, I I like it. Uh, if I was going any smaller, I probably would uh, I would maybe use the the Pertagon because the Pertagon is quite a bit thinner. It's narrower, right? Now this is different color but you can see how much narrower that is right so it's probably half the thickness and you can get it in a in a like in a floral green like that one and then you could do it in the in the luminous um, but I, I really like the effect that this uh, gives this this pattern um, so that one is a like I said it's about a medium sparse um, and then you've got like this one here that I tied earlier this one's a pretty thick it's got a pretty thick collar on it right so I like having a little bit of both styles. Um, again, you've probably if you guys have been watching my videos, I do that all the time. I like having some that are heavier, some that are lighter, some that are sparser, some that are thicker. Um, I just like having a variety in my box. Um, my boxes sometimes get a little overloaded, but because I like having so many different patterns. But uh, yeah, that's the way it is. So, so like I said, um, yeah, just enjoy that one. Uh, it's it's super successful. It it really works really well. It's kind of a kind of a um, a hair's ear almost. So it could be a mayfly, a caddis. I mean, there's all kinds of things it could represent. It's almost like a searching pattern. So, um, but uh, it's a great little uh, great little fly for the rivers for sure. So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, thumbs up. Uh, please share. I'll let people know. And um, yeah, if you've subscribed, thank you. If you have not, consider doing so. And uh, yeah, smash that notification bell as well so you guys don't miss any other videos. And uh, we'll see you on the next video, guys. Tie lines.